Automatic Addison. In this tutorial, we will create a Cartesian path planning demo from scratch using the Move It Task Constructor. This demo showcases how to plan a series of movements for a robotic arm in Cartesian space, including linear motions, rotations, and joint movements. Here is what you will create. Our Cartesian Path Planner will demonstrate a sequence of planned movements. The first one is linear end effector motions. This is straight line movements of the arm's gripper, the end effector, relative to the base link coordinate frame. For example, moving the gripper 5 centimeters in the positive x direction, or moving it 2 centimeters in the negative y direction. Second is axis based rotations. So that's a twisting movement of the arm relative to the base link coordinate frame. For example, an 18 degree rotation around the z-axis. Third, we've got joint specific movements. That is moving specific joints of the arm by absolute amounts. For example, rotating a particular joint by 15 degrees or minus 15 degrees. And then we have position based transitions. For example, returning to the starting ready position smoothly. The code you will develop in this tutorial can serve as a template for various practical applications. The first is where you need precise object placement, such as a pick and place task, where you need precise linear movements for accurate object placement, and you need rotation capabilities for orienting the objects correctly. Next we've got assembly tasks, complex assembly operations, where you combine linear motions and rotations for complex assembly procedures. You need fine-tuned joint movements for intricate manipulations. And then finally, we've got continuous path processes. Think of welding or painting, painting a vehicle, where you need to use linear movements to follow seams or contours and maintain consistent orientation during the entire process. Now, you should already have the code in the right place if you followed my previous tutorials. If not, you're going to want to go here. Just open, go to your ROS2 workspace, source, my Cobot ROS2, my Cobot MTC demos and the source folder and make sure you've got this Cartesian CPP file in this particular path. You can find it on my GitHub. Make sure that code is in there along with the other pieces of code that we'll use in future tutorials. Now for our next step, let's make sure we build the code. So if you've added the code, you need to go and build it. We go to CT, CD, ROS2 workspace and run a Colcon build. All right, and source the bash. Let's do that, X out of that so you can see what I'm doing. Source the bash RC. Why are we sourcing the bash RC? As you know, in my bash RC, I'll show you here. I am sourcing the ROS2 Jazzy distribution as well as sourcing the ROS2 workspace. So I put all of those commands in here so that anytime I open up a new terminal window, it's already done for you. So you don't need to do that over and over again. Okay, now that we've built and sourced the bash, it's time to launch everything. So we're going to do MTC underscore demos and then Cartesian. Okay, remember I've I showed, let me just show you here. I've got an alias called MTC demos, which launches this whole bash script and we need to add an argument to the end to determine what demo we want to launch. So take a look at previous tutorials where we set all of that up. I'm just going to dive right into it. MTC underscore demos and then Cartesian. Wait for it to come up. Okay, let's understand these results. So you've got the task tree over here in the panel reflects the structure of our program. At the top, you'll see motion planning tasks with Cartesian path underneath. Motion planning task, Cartesian path underneath. So this corresponds to our main task, which is designed to plan a series of Cartesian movements for the robotic arm. And you can see that our task is divided into seven stages. We've got the initial state, 
right here. Okay, that sets the starting position of the robot. This piece right here, this X plus 0 0.05, that moves the end effect of the gripper five centimeters in the positive X direction. We then got Y minus 0 0.02 where we move the end effector two centimeters in the negative y direction. We've got RZ minus 18. What does that mean? We rotate the end effector 18 degrees around the Z axis. Then we've got the joint offset where we adjust specific joint angles. We've got the connect stage right here where we ensure smooth transitions between all the previous stages. And then our final state where we set the ending position of the robot. Now the connect stage, this is where all the magic happens. And in our code, we've created a connect stage to smoothly link the previous stages using joint interpolation. Now the green check mark right here and numbers in this column, okay, they indicate how many successful solutions were found for each part of the task. For instance, if we see a one next to each stage, it means our planner successfully found a solution for each movement. And the rightmost column over here in the task tree displays the planning time for each component in seconds. This helps us understand which movements might be more computationally intensive. Now, as you experiment with the demo, try clicking on the different stages under the task tree. And then click the line in the rightmost column, okay, of the motion planning task panel. And you'll be able to visualize how each stage contributes to the overall motion of the robotic arm helping you understand the progression of movements in Cartesian space. Now, if you want to execute the entire motion, uh, you can use the execute button in your control interface. Click this right here. And you can see right here, we got completed trajectory execution with status succeeded. Now, if that didn't work for you, you can install Move It To from Source. Because if it didn't work, it's likely some issue with your version of Move It To. So let me show you the series of commands to do that. You'll do CD. ROS2 workspace source and then to do git clone https colon slash slash github dot com slash move it slash move it to dot git space hyphen b for branch and then jazzy i'm not going to run this command because i already have it in my workspace but you will clone the move it to repo into your workspace and then after you do that you'll move into the move it to folder you can see we're right now in ross2 source move it to you'll have that after you clone the repo okay and then you will do git reset hard and then the hash there's a long hash. As of the time of this video, this is the hash that I'm using. So feel free to pause the video and get all of that. And you can find the commit if you go over here. Let's open up this fa Firefox here. You go to HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash move it slash move it to slash commits slash jazzy and here we have all of the commits and you can find the one on june 5th 2025 click this one june 5th 2025 and you can actually copy and paste this whole piece right there that's the commit that we're on move it changes all the time move it in the move it chess constructor they're constantly updating and making Changes. This is the beauty of open source software. It's great because lots of people are working on it. But one of the downsides is that you have this beautifully working simulation and then upstream on the GitHub repo, somebody will change something and it'll break your whole software stack.
Then after you do the reset hard, you'll go back to the workspace and you'll just do a new, normal build like we normally do. Run a coal con. Oh, before that, sorry, sorry. So go to the workspace. You're going to do a ROS depth update, okay, to update your dependencies. Then you're going to run this command to check the dependencies. So ROS depth install and then hyphen hyphen from hyphen paths space src space and then hyphen hyphen ignore hyphen src and then space and then hyphen r and then hyphen y you run this command right here okay and it should say all required raw steps installed successfully then you do your colcon build okay and then after you do your colcon build let's just run it going to see all of the different stuff. It's going to take you a long time. It could be up to an hour if you're installing Move It 2 from source. Just go get something to eat and then come back later. But yeah, so it's building now. Okay, and then once you do that, you're going to do source colon forward slash dot bash RC because I remember I sourced the ROS distribution and the workspace in my bash RC. So that's it. So make sure that if you run into any issues in Arviz when you're trying to execute right here, clicking that execute solution button, very common, move it, changes all the time. It could be the move it task constructor as well, uh, but it typically move it issues there. So that's it for that. All right, now let's do a detailed code walkthrough. I'm going to clear here. Let's go CD ROS2. Source, mycobot ROS2, mycobot MTC demos, and then SRC. And let's do a get it Cartesian CPP. Here the code begins with a comprehensive comment block outlining the file's purpose, demonstrating Cartesian path planning using MoveIt task constructor. Okay, it describes a program's functionality, which includes planning linear motions, rotations, and joint movements in Cartesian space for our robotic arm. And the file includes the necessary headers for ROS2, MoveIt, and the task constructor library, establishing the foundation for our Cartesian path planning demo. So here on line 36, we define the create task function, which is responsible for setting up the task constructor task with various stages of movement. Let's break it down. So we've got our task object right there that's created and we name it Cartesian path. Two solvers are set up, one for Cartesian path planning and another for joint interpolation. These solvers will be used in different stages of the task. Next, we've got our robot model right there, loaded, locked and loaded, and a planning scene is created right there. This part sets up the environment in which the robot will operate. The initial state of the robot is set to the ready position, and this state is added as the first stage of the task. Here, we've got the movement stages can go through here. This function sets up several movement stages. We move five centimeters in the X direction, positive X. Down here, we move two centimeters in the minus Y direction. In stage three, we rotate minus 18 degrees around the Z axis of the base link frame. And then in stage four, we move specific joints by specified angles. Each of these stages is created using the stages move relative, configured with the appropriate movement parameters and added to the task. Then we've got the connect stage. This is where all the magic happens. It's added to ensure smooth transitions between all of the previous stages. And then finally, we have our final state, which is set to be the same as the initial state completing the movement cycle. Got our main function down here, which orchestrates the entire demo. 
We've got our ROS2 initialization, initialization and node setup. Create a node named Cartesian Demo. Got our spinning thread right here. A separate thread is created to handle ROS2 callbacks, allowing the node to process incoming messages and services. The task is created here using the create task function. The code then attempts to plan the task. If planning succeeds, the solution is published for visualization or execution. Got very good error handling in here to catch and report any exceptions that occur during the planning process. And then finally down here, the program waits for ROS2 spinning thread to finish, allowing for in inspection of the results in RViz before you exit the program down here. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and keep building.